Welcome back, everyone. Again, Frank DeMore here for the End Times Research Ministry. And it's January the 18th, getting right into prophecy. And so let me scroll down here and we'll start covering some of the issues that have come up in the news. Now, as usual, what I always do is give you the scripture first the Bible prophecy that the Lord revealed to us, that the things that he wants us to recognize as we're Christians doing the Lord's will, and what I mean by that is the Lord Jesus told us to keep on the watch. He said this many, many times in the scriptures, and it was a command. He didn't say, well, if you feel like it today, keep on a watch. Um, just like study to show yourself approve, a workman dividing the word. So we know uh, God wants us to be in his word, and while we're in his word, he's revealing things to us through his scriptures, and this is what I'm pointing out. And concerning these last days, if you're brand new to prophecy, or you just found my site, please understand this. This generation, the, the present generation, is the generation, without a doubt, that's been chosen to see our Lord's second coming. We know that from Matthew chapter 24, when the Lord told us, uh, that first of all he talks about Israel being born again uh, he, he likens Israel to the fig tree and he tells us when its branches are yet tender and poured for its leaves you know that summer is nigh and so likewise when you see he says he continues on when you shall see all these things know that it's near even at the door and then he says specific this generation will not pass till all these things take place. So, Israel's already established. We know that's the generation. And before this generation is gone, we are going to see the Lord Jesus Christ uh, re-enter into Jerusalem to begin his thousand-year reign, which I'll discuss a little bit uh, later on this video. Now, again, the prophecy that I've been showing people is Zechariah. Because this is one of the main issues in the news almost every single day now. And the prophet Zechariah, under the direction of our Lord God, he told us problems in Jerusalem. And behold, I will make Jerusalem a cup of trembling unto all the people round about. And when they shall be in the siege, both against Judea and against Jerusalem. And in that day I will make Jerusalem a burdensome stone for all people all that burden themselves will be cut into pieces, though all the people of the earth are gathered together against it. So before it's all over, everybody's going to be coming against Israel. All the nations, all the leaders are going to turn, everyone, including the United States. Now yesterday, I gave some information about the relationship between Barack Obama and uh, Netanyahu, the Prime Minister of Israel. And again, contentions and some of the new information I want to uh, relate to you about uh, this, this issue because the United States was the closest ally and now it's disintegrating. I showed you that yesterday, so if you haven't seen my post or my video yesterday, please go to my post uh, January 17th, watch that video. I give you the documentation there about that. But this is new information today. January the 18th, as you can see right here, it says Obama and Netanyahu relationship is the most dysfunctional ever. And it never used to be this bad. I mean, it's the, the markings of the birth pangs are definitely here. The birth pangs is what I'm referring to in Mark chapter 13, verse 8, where he says that the last day's events were going to happen, happen as a woman with birth pangs. And we know how it's going to get worse and worse. The U.S. President and the Israeli Prime Minister have never been as deeply at odds uh, and so uh, for so long, says the former top U.S. diplomat. And the relationship between the U.S. President Barack Obama and Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu is the most dysfunctional ever between an American president and the Israeli Prime Minister, a veteran former American diplomat, said on Thursday. Alan David Miller, scholar at the Woodrow Wilson Center, who served under six Secretary of State's Republican Democratic administrations, added that while there has been strained personal relationships between the two countries' uh, top leaders in the past, this breakdown was unique. 
And I, this is what I've been telling, warning people about it, and I'm glad that this diplomat is saying it because he's confirming what I've been saying as I point to Zechariah 12.3, in that it had not been corrected in four years and would now likely be extended with Obama's re-election and Netanyahu's likely re-election next week. Let me move this up a little bit. Now, speaking on the Warren Only's APR show, to the point, Miller noted that both Jimmy Carter, Mahakin Begin, and George W. Bush and Yaksvir Shamir had difficult relationships, but in both of those cases, common cause emerged to improve the connection. And I've been warning people, don't expect that with Barack Obama. Uh, because he is at odds with Israel. And I think that we have an evil king in the United States, and that evil king was part and parcel because the country is turning away from God, and when that happens, the country disintegrates, and the only way that the United States can come back again uh, would be that if we follow the precepts of our Lord and uh, get heed to our Savior Jesus Christ. Now, going on, in the case of Carter Begin, it was the opportunity to make peace with Egypt. And in the case of Bush and Shamir, it was the struggle against Saddam Hussein, where Shamir agreed not to retaliate for Assam's Scud missiles attacks on Israel. Now, no such common cause has emerged to salvage the dysfunctional Obama-Netanyahu relationship, he said, noting that even the shared concern over Iran's nuclear drive was characteristic by a significant difference between the two men over how to handle the threat. And Miller said that he did not share the... Uh, Consequent uh, sense of cosmic OV felt by some other uh, potential dramatic deterioration in ties between the two allied countries. The U.S. and Israel relationship is too important to fail, he said. And you're not kidding. And it's more than just uh, friendships between nations. It's alliance with God. You separate yourself and you come against Israel, you will line yourself against God. So Miller, uh, although he is right on the mark about the consequences, there's even a much more greater consequence that Miller didn't uh, state. Now still he said the two men mistrust one another. And you're not kidding, because it's obvious over the last four years that Baren, uh, Barack Obama has stabbed Israel in the back and thrown them on the bus countless numbers of times. So this is an article, it goes on a little bit more, but I just wanted to show you that the, the relationship, and here's the uh, Miller, again, the, uh, the relationship is being reported on, and it goes parallel to what we read in the scriptures. Now, let me go to the next one here. And I, I do have some important things that I want to share with you, but as I scroll up here, this article is pretty long, but it goes to the heart of the matter. PM, Obama, and I do have our differences on the peace process. Now, why did I put this up here? Well, I want to show you why I put this up here. Because the Lord told us in the last days there was going to be a call for peace and safety. And obviously, as you see the guns in here, this figure that I made up, it shows that while they're calling for peace and safety, there's going to be war. There's no doubt about it. And there's, this war has to take place. And the Messiah, you see this paper that was put up and it was proclaiming that the Messiah, I don't know when this was, I just took a picture of this and to try to make a point a little bit later here. But uh, the Messiah will be coming, but there has to be some wars that have to be fulfilled yet. And we know that the Messiah is definitely going to be here. Uh, he's, he's returning. We just don't know the day or the hour that he is coming. But we do know that there are some prophecies that still have to be fulfilled. right? Now, this doesn't have anything to do about the rapture of the church. I'm just saying that there's prophecies that have to be fulfilled. Christ is going to come whether uh, you believe in a rapture or not. But... According to what Paul wrote about the call for peace and safety, he says, For when they shall say, 
peace and safety, then sudden destruction come upon them as travail upon a woman with child, and they shall not escape. So this is the second place where Christ likens the birth pangs to a woman, all right? And we know that the sudden destruction is going to come, and we know that it's going to be happening when there's a call for peace and safety, and there's all kinds of news about that almost every single day. And you'll see the significance of why I put up Watch Out for Daniel 9.27. Now keep in mind, this is also Daniel chapter 2. Daniel, a figure that I put up for the teaching on Daniel chapter 2, because Daniel was given the vision about every world empire from the time that Daniel was alive when Babylon uh, was ruling under Nebuchadnezzar all the way to the end when Christ would be returning when the Roman Empire would be revived again and the ten toes would be significant because they were ten kings symbolism of the ten kings that would, would arise from the old Roman Empire you see the western the eastern divisions of the old Roman Empire and so this becomes very very important because the old Roman Empire uh, you don't have to wait for that being born again because just like Israel was born again, so has been the old Roman Empire. Now, when we look at this article that I was just sharing with you about the peace differences, now let me go back there, and I want to read a little bit. It says, a week before the elections, the Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu sat with the Jerusalem Post to talk about Obama, Bennett, Abbas. These are Abbas and Bennett. They're people that, you know, the PLO leader is Abbas. Obviously, he wants to get rid of Israel. And uh, recently, I showed you how they've taken Israel off the map, and they call it Palestine. And, of course, Zechariah... Uh, prophecy tells us Israel is going to be left alone and Psalm 83 tells us that all these nations that border Israel are going to attack and Abbas is one of those groups of people. He's the head of the Fatah movement, PLO obviously. But let's go on here. It says Abbas and why the country needs hands and only his hands on the wheel. Now keep in mind this is actually going to the point where uh, Benjamin Netanyahu was making remarks again to what Obama said about uh, the Prime Minister, and the Prime Minister didn't like these remarks. So there are there's a this is a long article here, but it's very, very interesting. I'm gonna highlight a little bit of it. I'm gonna scroll down to what I did have for you because I want to make sure that you saw this. This is probably the most important part. I hope that it's there you go. And you're going to see the significance about this as well. And so what I'm going to do is uh, backtrack a little bit. I'm going to show you this first. This says, King Abdullah gave an interview yesterday in which he said that after the election, the Europeans would come with a new initiative. All right. So when you're talking about the Europeans, you're talking about the revived Roman Empire. Keep that in mind. And this is what the Lord warned about in the last days. Do you know anything about that? This is during the interview. And do you plan to put anything of your own on the table? And I'm sure there will be many initiatives. And certainly there will have an important task in trying to tell the truth to the world that the Palestinian problem is neither the core of the instability in the Middle East. People actually believe that until the Arab Spring, and I think they're a little wiser now, nor that the question of the settlements is the core of the Palestinian-Israeli uh, conflict. And the core of the conflict is the persistence refusal of the Palestinians to recognize the Jewish state in any boundary. All right, so what we have here is Jerusalem is that burdensome stone. That's obvious. You see it here, and you see that the Europeans want to come back in to try to get the, the Palestinians and the Israelis to sit down and have peace. 
So we have the call for peace and safety. That's here. We have the European Union, the revived Roman Empire. That's here. We have them now signifying that they want to get involved again, the Europeans. And why am I putting this out there? Is because of what you're going to see in Daniel chapter 9, verse 27, where there's a confirmation or a confirming of a covenant, a peace agreement for seven years with Israel. And we know that that will be the Antichrist who does that. So when we see that the Roman Empire is already here, you got to pay attention to what's going on when they're calling for peace and safety because the man who's going to confirm that is going to be the Antichrist. And most of the people are unaware of this information. Now, scrolling back up, like I said, it's a long article, but it really is an interesting article. Uh I'm going to read just a little bit of it, and I hope that this will give you a, a taste to go in and get more. It says, this is the leader widely uh, assailed by much of the world, a leader whom the U.S. columnist this week reported was verbally dumped on by the U.S. President Barack Obama. And again, I've been warning you that this was going to happen, uh, and it has happened from the, from the president. And a lot of people think that this president is not a Christian uh, because of his works and what he is doing towards Israel because no real Christian would try to, to dump on Israel the way he is, trying to separate Israel, trying to give Palestine away, divide the land, and so forth. I mean, it's just unheard of if you're a real Christian, and that's why they're saying that they believe that he is a Muslim. Now, this is a leader whose own commitment to peace has, has been not so subtle questioned by even his own president and whose former secretary services head, Yonov Diskin, trashed a few weeks ago in a six-page spread in one of the nation's leading papers, a paper that it itself has been driven a campaign to dethrone him. This is a leader whose predecessor, Ion Omarak, or... Elmer uh, blesses for washing NIS 11 billion on delusional, uh, venturous military plans, and yet this is the leader going to the elections on Tuesday, not wondering whether he will win, but rather how wide his margin of victory will be. And I believe that just like President Barack Obama has been placed in power that the Prime Minister, Benjamin Netanyahu, has also been placed in power at this particular time in history because God is placing the men in position to fulfill all the prophecies that haven't been fulfilled. It is, there's no question that this man, U.S. President Barack Obama, has been placed in there to stem the tide or to, to bring on the tide of Zechariah 12.3 to disband friendship with the nation of Israel. And I believe that the Prime Minister of Israel has been placed at the proper time because he is a man who is going by Scripture and the Bible. He's putting his trust in God. All right, now, like I said yesterday, I can't confirm whether he's a Christian or not, but this man does have a Bible study. Now, let me go back a little bit more and read a little bit more what he has to say. Uh, let me think, because as a matter of fact, I believe that here it is. It says, Netanyahu stress that he has reinstated the Prime Minister's Bible study group. So there you go. I'm going to highlight this so make sure that everybody can see this really good. Netanyahu stressed that he has reinstated the Prime Minister's Bible study group and re, uh, reveal the Bible or revive the Bible or National Bible Quiz for Adults. This is real. It reflects my own values. What I was brought up with and that I received deep Jewish education grounded in the Jewish history and grounded in the Bible. And this is what I imparted in my children and something I want to impart to all the children of Israel. It is deep and the people know it. It is not a flag we raise before the election. It is something that uh, emanates from a wellspring of values that 
uh, animates me and Maludric as a whole. So he, as the president that God has placed in this position at this particular time, there's no question that this man is going to stand firm on his belief. And I truly believe that he knows all about Psalm 83. He knows who's going to win that war. And I'm, I'm convinced that he knows Ezekiel chapter 38, where he knows his nation will be attacked a second time and that Israel will not be defeated. And so, go ahead. I'm hoping that this information will instill you to read the rest of it because it's very, very intriguing. And uh, But there's no question about the, uh, the fallout of the United States in Israel's relationship. It is for a purpose. Men are being placed in position uh, for, for a purpose. Now, let me go back to, and we'll scroll down here a little bit. And now, look at this. Here's another article, and keep in mind here. Let me go back. Let me go back here, uh, because Israel's at the forefront of what's going to be happening in the news just about every single day. And so, let me again scroll down. I want to show you something about the King Abdullah, and then we'll go back here. Let me get to it. All right, the second photo that I put up today, you'll see the mark here. This is about the Psalm 83 war, and it tells you exactly who is going to attack. Here's the nations and then the modern-day names. And you see the arrow here. This arrow is pointed to, guess what, Saudi Arabia, the Ishmaelites. Ishmael is the father of the Arabs, and this country is going to align itself with the PLO and everybody else in there to try to take out Israel. All right, so why did I put this up here? Well... Take a look at this. All right, now that I have that up for you, this is January 17th yesterday. I didn't report on this, but I figured now is a good time to do that. Saudi Arabia to send the Palestinian Authority, USD, 100 million in aid. The headline should show you uh, enough information. But what you have here is the Saudi finance minister, what they're doing is they're giving, they're allying themselves with the Palestinians who have been having all kinds of problems, obviously, with Israel. And there is no coincidence that Saudi Arabia is aligning up themselves with the Palestinians because you know now that from this, let me get over to my site again, uh, that the Palestinians are mentioned, or the uh, Saudi Arabia is mentioned in that attack. And every single day, just about every single day, I, I should say, that we're seeing news, either one or multiple of these nations are saying things that uh, are projecting this Psalm 83 war from commencing. And so that's why it's really important to watch what's going on. And I, that's why I stand on the word of the Lord where the Lord said, watch, keep on the watch. Because these things are really uh, important. All right, so uh, we see the, let me go back up to here now because there's some other information that I wanted to uh, shed some light on with you. And you'll see this one I just covered, the Obama and the differences in the peace. Now let me go over to the next one. This is today's news. Netanyahu vows no raising of the set, no raising of the settlements if elected. Let me just go down and tell you what he said here. The Israeli Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu pledged on Friday that there will be no dismantlement of any Jewish settlements in the occupied West Bank. Now this is another problem that has caused the uh, breakdown of the peace process. The call for peace and safety has been stalled part and parcel because of the land issue here at the West Bank. If he wins a general election next week. Asked in an interview with this particular newspaper, uh, can you promise that during the next four years, no settlement will be dismantled? Netanyahu answered yes. The days when bulldozers uprooted Jews are behind us, not in front of us. Our, our uh, record proves it, he said. So what he is saying, he's not going to care about what anybody is saying. He knows that this land was given to him by God. He knows that and he's teaching probably about this in his Bible studies that he's having. 
So he knows that he's not going to give this land away. And what's happening here is it's isolating the world because the world view is they're on land that is illegally taken by the Israelis. And that's not what Benjamin uh, Netanyahu believes. He believes that this land, according to the scriptures, was given to him as an inheritance by God to his forefathers. And so this is going to be, and I've said it many, many times, one of the causes that I believe that's going to cause the attack to take place on Israel, that first war in Psalm 83. Now let me go back to my site for a second here. And I want to show you Daniel 9.27. All right, because Daniel 9.27, we know that there's going to be a peace agreement that will be signed. I told you up here before I was going to discuss this a little bit, and I showed you this paper, uh, and I said, watch out for 9.27. That would be Daniel 9.27, because this is the confirmation uh, that when the peace comes. So if you don't know the Lord, if you're not reading the Bible, if you haven't received Christ as your personal Savior, by far you're going to have to understand 927 so that when it happens, you'll know that you're, you're in deep, deep uh, trouble. Let me go right over here. So Daniel 927. Uh, let me bring that up for you. It says, and he will make a covenant with the many for one week. But in the middle of the week, he will put a stop to sacrifice and gain offerings, and on the wing of the abominations will come one who makes desolate, even until the complete destruction, one that is decreed, is poured out on the one who makes desolate. This is a prophecy about the Antichrist. The Antichrist is going to confirm a covenant, some kind of agreement for seven years, this is the last week of Daniel's prophecy that where God gave to Daniel to let us understand how he was going to deal with the Jews for 490 years. And uh, we know that uh, that time period is almost up and the beginning of the last seven years of this prophecy is going to commence. And it will start with the con confirmation of this agreement uh, by the Antichrist. So you really needed to understand that. So Daniel 9.27 is known as the 70th week of Daniel's, uh, and I have, there's a summary uh, diagram that I'll have there for you, the 70th week or the tribulation. As with all scriptures, this important passage should be interpreted in its, its, in its plain, natural, literal sense, taking care of to avoid speculation allegorization, application of his symbolism, or spiritualization. Any other in interpretive schismeds uh, other than literal leaves this uh, critical passage and this entire section. All right, so let's take a look at the entire section here, if you will, because I just, Daniel, right here in verse 24, let's start. Seventy weeks have been decreed for your people and for your holy city. Now each week is a period of seven years. All right. There's a complete study you can do, but for now, just just note that each week is seven seven years. And seventy uh, times seven would equal four hundred and ninety years, as I said that God was going to be dealing with the nation Israel. So seventy weeks have been decreed for your people, that's the Jews uh, f specifically for the Jews, your holy city, which would be Jerusalem, to finish the transgression and to make an end to sin, to make atonement for iniquity, to bring the everlasting righteous, to seal up the vision of prophecy, and to anoint the most holy place. And that, that place is where going to be Jesus Christ is. So, uh, so you are to know and discern that the, from the issuing of the decree to restore and rebuild Jerusalem the, until Messiah the Prince, and now we know who that is, there will be seven, 70 weeks and 62 weeks, and it will be built again, the plaza in the moat, even in, in the times of distress. 
All right, so they were going to start building the, the temple. They did that. All that prophecy was fulfilled. And then the time period, this 490 years, was underway. Then after 62 weeks, or if you will, uh, 60, 62 weeks uh, would be uh, 484 years, or, uh, or the fulfillment of that 69 weeks. That's when Jesus Christ would go in to Jerusalem to be killed. That's what they're telling us here. And after 62 weeks, the Messiah will be cut off and have nothing. And the people of the prince who is to come, of course, that would be the Antichrist, destroy the city and the sanctuary. Who did that? Well, it was the Romans, the Roman Empire, the ones who destroyed the second temple in 70 AD under Titus. And its end will come with the flood, even in the end, and there will be war. Desolations are determined. And then here you have, I already read this, about the peace, this covenant that the Antichrist will be making. And that's what's going to signify the beginning of this seven-year tribulation. All right? So knowing that, which we just covered, open to a variety of interpretations limited only by the expository's imagination as discussed below. So what he was saying here is just read it for what it is. Don't try to manipulate it or give your own interpretation. A little interpretation indicates the events described are yet future. They haven't happened yet, no doubt. For one cannot identify a historical seven-year period which completely explains all the events, i.e. the Jewish temple, is currently non-existent. And they're getting ready to rebuild that temple now. I've shown you a lot of documentation about that. But, but must be present for sacrifices to be uh, terminated. The verse describes what expositors have referred to as the tribulation, but it should be noted that there is not specific scripture that designates the entire seven-year period as tribulation. All right, we know that the period is of, of destruction, the period of wrath. There's a whole period of a seven-year period that last week, but let me go on here and it'll explain it really good for you. On the other hand, the term Great Tribulation is very specific term which was used by Jesus to designate the last three and a half years of Daniel's 70 weeks. Makes it very clear. Right? Now if you want to go over there, you'll see the... Uh, you click and you'll get the rest of the information about the abomination and desolation, the Jewish temple and all that for you. So I'm just showing you where the links are so that you can click those links. When you click this link, it'll bring you to what Jesus said about this, uh, the subject about this, the abomination and desolation. Now the Old Testament term for this last three and a half, let me move this up and get this out of the way, last three and a half years is the time of Jacob's distress. Right, and when you read the scripture here, you'll see, alas, for that, for the day is great. There is none like it, and it is the time of Jacob's distress. But he will be saved from it. So, we know that the tribulation period, the last three and a half years, is going to be horrendous. One like was never seen before. And of course, if you want to take a look at this uh, time period, we know. Uh, if you will, this is the, the 69 weeks. This was the church age, which is the gap that we're living in right now. And as soon as that's over, the rapture of the church takes place. Uh, and that's when the last 70 weeks of Daniel takes place. And in that period, three and a half years into it, that's when you'll see this covenant being signed. Very, very important information. So we know that the call for peace and safety uh, no vowing for the settlements that I just covered at the last report that I covered with you there that it's going to cause rifts with the Arabs they're going to want to take this land back because they know Netanyahu is building on land that the Palestinians and the Arabs consider their land and so there's going to be a move and, a not, and, a, and I believe not that far off that the, these nations in Psalm 83 are going to try to take them out all right, we know that for sure because the Bible says that they're going to come together and, you know, let's cut them off with the nation of Israel be no more in remembrance. So now, let me go into Egypt because you'll see in this right here 
Uh, in the Psalm 83, uh, you see the yellow marking Egypt. I showed you the Saudi Arabia before, but now it's the Hagarenes, the modern-day Egyptians who are also aligned themselves with, obviously, Saudi Arabia. And here is a cleric, a um, uh, Muslim cleric, and when you go to my site there, you'll be able to scroll down, and there's going to be a, uh, a video there of the, of the cleric. All right, I put that up on my post for you. You click this link and the, the cleric will be speaking there. And he's talking about, well, let me, let me go over there if I can. Let's see here. All right, this is uh, the one that I was referring to. Let me just play this for you where it's, I started it off. Uh, it, where it says, does this mean you are calling us to wage war against the Israel? All right, so, uh, you know, what happens at this site, sometimes when you play it and you stop it, it doesn't play again until you refresh the page. But if you look at the marker here, two, point, uh, two minutes and 14 seconds into it, that's uh, where you'll find out what the cleric has to say. Now, why am I showing you this? Because obviously, the Lord has pointed to... Uh, Egypt and Egypt is getting signals just about every week now that they want to attack Israel and that becomes important because very important because they're listed in the Psalm 83 war all right so now when we're looking at let me show you something here as long as we're at it take a look at this this is the east gate this is a uh, prophecy by the way all right when I was in Jerusalem I took this picture and for those of you, this is a sidebar uh, to the news today, but many of you don't know that this has been sealed up. The East Gate has been sealed up. Look at this. Look what Ezekiel 44, verse 1 through 3 tells us. And I just put, by the way, this is me. And I quote, And then the man brought me back to the outer gate of the sanctuary, the one facing east. There you go, right here, all right? And it was shut. And obviously, you see it right here. It is blocked off. Stone proof evidence. This prophecy is still in the making here. The Lord said to me, This gate is to remain shut. It must not be opened. No man may enter through it. And that means no one. It is to remain shut because the Lord, the God of Israel, has entered through it. The prince himself. Who is the prince? Jesus Christ is the only one who may sit inside the gateway to eat in the presence of the Lord. He is to enter by way of the portico of the gateway and go out the same way. So let me say this to any of the Muslims out there, any of the Muslim radicals who believe that they are going to inherit God's kingdom. God wants you to have a challenge. This gate has been sealed off. This is in the Bible, all right? It's not in the Quran. This is in the Bible. So if you want to find out if Jesus Christ is, in fact, the true Messiah, he is the, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost in one. It's not three gods. It's one God in the form of three personages. You want to find out whether Jesus is true, and this goes for anybody. You want to find out if the Messiah is true, Try to get through this east gate before Jesus Christ does. Because two things are going to happen. Either one, you will die in your attempt, or number two, you'll find out that Jesus is in fact exactly who he said. Now again, specifically to the Muslims who want to take over this land, I tell you now, if you try to attack this nation, set your sights on this gate right here. Because if you do, you're going to find out that there is no way any shells or any instrument of destruction that you have are going to tear down the east gate until the Messiah, Jesus Christ, the Prince, the Prince is yet to come, will go through that temple before this east gate is knocked down. We are going to go through. This is the East Gate with the Lord Jesus Christ, but it will be him going through it first. There's no question about it. Now, uh, concerning the, uh, the article about these, these uh, Saudi Arabia giving the money, 
There's also news about the, let me see if I can go and get it here for you. About the U.S. shipping over F-16s, the military, these jets over to, to uh, Egypt. And I said in my post that, you know, a while back that uh, you'll see here that many, uh, get this out of the way, many congressional representatives have called a stop to the military aid to Egypt. Now, a while back, let me go back to my site here. A while back, I put up that information and I made a video. And here's where it came out, January 4th of 2013. Now, in that video, what I said in my video was that about these F-16 fighters, I said, watch what Barack Obama does because he's going to send them over anyway. He's done everything to antagonize Israel, including arming the enemy of God's people. And so I made, I made that statement and I found it very interesting that this video that I had up was taken off. As a matter of fact, let me go over there and show you this because this is the video. This is the uh, the post that I made and you'll see I was talking about Marcy there that video wasn't taken down but here's the one about the Jets but my video about the warning about President Obama and what was his administration was going to do giving these military hardware over to uh, to in, and no doubt be used against Israel was taken off I find that very very interesting so again, let me go back over to my site and get into another prophecy very quickly because this prophecy tells us the restoration of the Jewish people. They're going to be going home, uh, leaving from all over the world. And again, look at this. Uh, headline, 2,000th member of the lost tribes return home. This is an article that shows us that prophecy is being fulfilled. And you'll see this here. And uh, here, a picture of the, the people that are coming back. They're coming in from, uh, this particular group is coming from the northeastern India. And what's, what's so important about this is, this is supposed to happen in the last days, in the same generation who saw the rebirth of Israel. All of these things are happening now in one generation. You can believe it. Because it's the truth. And God is going to show you his truth by fulfilling every single word that he's ever said. And this is obvious that uh, this information is only a handful of the information and documentation I have for you. Now, if you want all the information pertaining to the coming, uh, the coming of the Jews back into the homeland or all the rest of the issues that I've been bringing up, go to my site. Click the link. When you get to my site, you'll see the link right there. Download my book today for free. Now, I'm going into a situation where I may not be able to post for the next eight days. I just want everybody to understand that and uh, so that you don't see any posts. Don't get alarmed. Uh, with God's will, I'll be back and, uh, after the eighth day and there'll be more posts. I'll do whatever I can during that eight period of time to post if I can, but I just want to let the people know. This is Frank DeMora. I love you all. Thank you so much for allowing me to come into your home this way and to share what God has given to me, to you. And everything that I'm sharing is coming from His Word, the Bible. That is one person who will never, ever let you down or mislead you in any way, shape, or form. This is Frank DeMora, The Last Chronicles of the Planet Earth my book and here at the End Times Research Ministry.